Enjoy the show. Play on my tango. Here I am. Hello. Well, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. How are you guys doing tonight? A, a lot, a lot better than I have been. The beginning of this year, I had like life gremlins following me around and just kind of throwing wrenches where, uh, they, where they, wherever they could. Just like when we tried to have you on the first time, um, I lost my voice after that too, and I tried to. I, I, I got sick. Like I got whatever bug is going around. I got it. I lost my voice. Um, <laughs> Frank knows because we tried to do a Dungeons and Dragons podcast, and I, 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 I couldn't. It, it, I couldn't release it. I'll say because I. That's one of my pet peeves is audio, and yes. if I can't watch it, I feel like they can't watch it. All right, I'm at the tail end of that myself. So if I sound a little froggy, it's because I'm. Yeah. You know, I I no longer sound like B. Arthur, so I figured I was good to go for for this tonight. <laughs> So. <laughs> B. Arthur is passable. Uh, Everyone loves B. Arthur. B. Arthur. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that that deep. Right. Hey, hey guys, thanks for having me on. You know. <laughs> so <laughs> so my, well, I'll get you for that, okay? My first question <laughs> is what got you into podcasting? Because you are an author of a book. I am. Which as I'm I scrolling am. up through your page, here we go. Everything I need to know I learned in GoGo. And you're also your podcast as well, which I'm yes. scrolling back down to that because I'm not a fast scroller. The pod, the podcast learned in a go go, um, all places learned in go go the podcast in go go. Yeah, long long Friday. <laughs> long Friday with a lot of long German Radio part Gaga. numbers. Um, so, <laughs> what got you into podcasting? Um, Frankie James invited me to be on Mike Crazy X's podcast, and we had such a great time. I was like, how do I do this, too? That's, That's honestly as simple as it was is I'm at a point in my life now where my kids are adults, and I kind of am allowing myself to do. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. He doesn't I'm think you look that, 49 think, in 10 days. He doesn't so. think you look 49. That's that's what that yeah. response was. I know. Yes, I, know. I, I appreciate it. No, please, please keep telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like what? About 33? What? Yeah, 32. Oh, I thought, around, I thought at least around like my age. I'm 37 um, until yeah, May. So. I'm sorry. I always divert to clerks. I had to say in a row. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But no, I, I kind of am doing all the things now because I don't feel guilty about taking time away from them to do a podcast, write a book to, you know, it's, I'm just jumping in and I figure I'll jump off the cliff and I'll learn to fly as I go. And my first episode sounds like a book report. I tell people, please don't listen. Don't judge me by episode one. You know, I said, I'm either going to kick ass or make an ass out of myself. And I'm just going to do that. Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, Purge Hangers and Wall Hangers has been around. We're going on our sixth year come November. Um, but I've been podcasting for about 11 years. Uh, I'm going to cap it off at that. I'm going to feel old. But I'm going to cap it off at 11 years there of podcasting. He says as he's 10 years younger than me. But keep exactly. going. Isn't it? Exactly. It's, a, it's all in 10 <laughs> decimals of 10. But the... Uh, the thing that got me into it was my my friend at the time. Um, he he said, "Look, nobody knows video game industry like you, like me, like you do." Um, I want to do a podcast, and I was like, "Well, what's a podcast?" He said, "It's internet radio." I was immediately in. I was on the radio when I was in eighth grade in Philadelphia. So I've always kind of loved broadcasting. There's something that it's very, especially with podcasting, it's very much like local radio pop on a local radio station, you hear what's going on around you, you get all the events and it it deepens like, oh, this person even by me, I didn't know there was an indie comic artist in Chester. Now I know him very well. He's in my D my Dungeons and Dragons podcast, the Leem. You know? I was going to say is it a Leem cuz I've seen that podcast. I'm, exactly. I've been watching a, episodes. A, a Leem. <laughs> And this podcast just stumbled out of my normal podcasting. I was podcasting um, the – we were doing the, the Great Media Comic Con last year, and all of the Triforce podcast members, were most of them, were part of the con. So we kind of fell out of that, and I wanted to keep podcasting. So my podcast partner from there, Katarina Thermoscara, call her my wonderful woman, we had a, nice. uh, the podcast Matt and Cat Show. 
And we were having fun talking about nerdy stuff. And then we were like, you know what? Why don't we get Frank on? <laughs> you know, was fun, you know, I was like, <laughs> life stuff happened. I messaged Frank yeah. like, hey, Frank, you want to do a podcast? And that's where Tales of the Hunted came from. And it turned okay. into this interview podcast like somebody called me a journalist the other day and i was like what are you talking about <laughs> that I'm sounds a, like a grown-up word don't call I'm, me I'm a, <laughs> I'm a podcaster what is that you know yeah. journalist well, i want to know more about how you're on the radio in philly in eighth grade like how does oh. that happen uh, so when uh my brother and i we used to live here in delco but our parents bought a house or well had a house made rather in chester county so we okay. moved that to chester county and out there it's all farmland and country until they can, you know, keep that building process going um, and make it a suburb. There's hope. But we don't need plants to eat or anything. Nah, it's okay. Nah, it's, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll <laughs> 3D print whatever you need. Um, right. But there's lots of farmland and there's nothing to do. It takes 15 minutes just to get to a Wawa or any kind of like giant. So right. you're at driving. So we would listen to WMMR. All the time. And then when Raz was on the radio, which I am working on getting Raz on this podcast, um, it, well, it's not hard. I have had to actually just check my company email when I send out. I send out emails like I'm sure you know. Maybe I can get you on. And it's yes. – oh, I, and I don't pay attention to emails because it's mainly spam. But then I look back and I got a reply. I was like, oh, my God. And then there was another reply like, Matt, did you get my message? Like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't at all. <laughs> Sorry, Raz. But we called in, and we always had this funny stoner voice, like, oh, man, I forgot. And we called in as two stoner brothers. We, When we called in, we thought they asked, what song do you want to listen to? And we said, Truckin' from the Grateful Dead. Truckin', okay. yep, of course. They actually asked us, "What?" he said, what's your name? And he thought I said Chuck. So there were. He became Chuck. I, I was Chuck. You, there's, there was a parts guy. God bless his heart. He's an older guy. He called me Mark until a new guy corrected him. Like, That's I, so funny. I, I'll be Mark. Whoever you need me to be, buddy. I'll be. You want me to be Jim Bob? I'm, I'm Jim Bob. Be That's Jim hilarious. Bob tonight. So. We knew the we we would always drive this house by us. They had this mailbox, and the name of the family were Stoners. So Chuck and Charlie Stoney became in Philadelphia, you know, around two thousand one, two thousand two ish. Okay. Um, and I recently got some audio. I might I might even actually release some audio in the end credits of this podcast when I release it because it it was a big thing. We had Tasty Cake. Go to Raz. It was when you could get uh, – if you found the green filling in the Tasty Cake, you got a chance to meet Donovan McNabb. So okay. they asked WMOR. They said, hey, we want the Stoner Boys to try to find the green filling, but they keep finding looking for the wrong things like a hot dog or you know a green Tasty Cake. And they're like, right. You know, Not all the filling, these, but the all, cake. Yeah, all yeah. these weird things. And – that was like from Tasty Cake. So, and then even in another one, um, we got nominated for a national radio award. So, I had a lot of broadcasting experience when I'm in like eighth, ninth grade. I had right. CDs of this, of all the stuff that we did, and I still have them. And he, uh, I'd take them in, and I had all these copies made, and nobody wanted them. I had one kid broke it in front of me you know i mean there was a lot of hate there but when i got I into ask. podcasting i had my friend saying it's like internet radio so at that point i, I know radio and That's pretty cool we went along we did uh game uh, game content and you know just regular content creation on youtube but a couple different podcasts did over like 150 you know episodes with him fell out as a friend because Life happens, and you know some of your friends aren't there like for the entire are for ride. First season, and some are for a reason. So yes, yep. So when I uh, moved back to my house because I was living with him and his fiance at the time, I had moved back home, Ooh, and my brother had bought this place. <laughs> so we spent a year fixing it up, and in November, that's 
Curiously, also the Perjangers and Wallhangers uh, anniversary. Uh, oh, wow. That's when it, it all started with a car ride. And if uh, people go to our Spotify, you can actually go all the way back because obviously YouTube and the video podcast is all out there. But if you want to listen to the very start, you can. The podcast number nine is me and my podcast partner, Chris. I was driving him to go pick up his car from a mechanic. For some reason, was 45 minutes the hell away. And like, this is your mechanic. You couldn't find anybody closer. <laughs> so, A hey, for loyalty. It started off with that. But I did podcast with him in the past. And I knew anytime I would talk to him on the phone, I had to plan it out because it was a podcast. Um, right. I, when you talk to somebody, you're like, I feel like I should be recording. I, uh-huh. I, oh, absolutely. I, I really feel like, I, do I hit record now? <laughs> you know, and I have some some of that stuff as well. It's, it's with time, you'll gain the experience to kind of navigate the waters to where there's a big project that Per Jaggers and Wallhangers is cooking up. I told Frank about that I'm so excited to announce. I'm actually going to announce it when I have the man on, I'm recording with him on Monday. Um, but nice. there's a really big opportunity and through connections that I made in podcasting, it made it happen. So six years, I'm starting to get traction with, you know, all projects that we started. So, you know, it's, it's to have a passion is all you need really to make a podcast go. You have to just want to be in it. Most people don't want to talk at length. Right. So for you, to, yeah, especially, I, just, I see how inspiring you are. And I know you go. So well, what you said about interviewing, I did my first interview podcast is episode six. And I had so much fun. And like, mm-hmm. I'm just really looking forward to interviewing more people because I just, I went with it. And I think I did a good job, you know, not to, right. but I really think it came out awesome. Go for so. it, you know? It's, it's Absolutely. nice to have that feeling, especially six podcasts in you get a good one especially an interview it i gotta tell you that's impressive because especially for me it took man my first interview well it was technically uh when i went live at comic universe and it was the owner this guy frank link this guy was the longest uh co- owning comic book store in ridley it's still okay there. it's still there but it's just owned by uh another guy who's super cool um, but yeah. Frank Link was right. the first. I'm st- I, I got to reach out to Chris because we had this awesome idea for a podcast. We were going to do a tale of two Franks and have Frank Percy and Frank Link. So maybe I should reach out to Frank Link. I could still like make Frank this Square. tale of tale of two Franks. Oh, I can make this happen. I'm so excited. Well, so, we're the exact same shirt going in, but that's about it. You know? There we go. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, do all the things. That's what is so great about this time that we're living in. Like the years of I get a job, I work there 35 years, I get a gold watch, I retire, I die are over. Like you can start a new career at 40 years old. Who the hell cares? Like just do it. And, yeah. you know, I've tried so many things. I've fallen on my face. Who cares? I try the next thing, you know? Get up and do it again. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And that's the thing. It, you, It's success doesn't just you know, come like the grace of God, you have to work at it. And, and you not have to, to cut you off, but you can measure success in different yeah. ways too. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people, I, I talk about that in my book. Um, there's a lot of people who only consider you're successful if you make a certain amount of money. But to me, if I'm happy, I'm successful, man. Like that to me is what I need in my life, yeah. you know? So. I love that. Happiness so, is kill. the ultimate. Um, I feel it's the ultimate goal because everybody's, you know, they strive for happiness. Why are you trudging through that day job? Well, it's right. because I have a passion, whether it be your family and wanting your family to do better, whether it be betting on yourself like I do, like Frank does, like so many creative people and yourself do. And yourself. Betting on yourself is one of the best things that you can do. Like if you re- recognize like, hey, I actually might have a, a talent for this and mm-hmm. a passion that is outside of my day job. And it brings a lot of joy. Like the one th- 
Um, I will release the Dungeons and Dragons episode. I'm going to be getting to that. It's just so many people want to be on the podcast. I don't have time. <laughs> I got a project to do for Frank. He's just understanding because um, he's right. here and he sees. Oh, he's clearly busy. Okay. Frank's got projects himself, so they can't really hold it over somebody else's head. <laughs> there you go. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. Like that. yeah. And yeah. we all have the the digging ditches trudging through to make the bills like you know yeah. very few of us make it to where it's like you know but mm-hmm. you need to realize that there's a pendulum like it swings into the season of suck and then everything seems to be like uh, and then it swings back and it's like yay so you have to be willing to push it real far that way to get the real yeah. yay because yeah. you can hang out in here mm-hmm. and you know everything's just kind of like well oh, i'm paying the bills and i'm doing but you don't really get any real joy because right. you're not really getting real paint. If that mediocre, means. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, middle one. yeah, so you want that better and above. So sure, absolutely. That's 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 a really nice way of putting it, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, a nice thing that I I actually saw it today, it's almost serendipitous that it popped up on my feed because um, I knew I was going to have you on. It was a quote from Chief Red Eagle. Angry people want you to see how powerful they are. Loving people want you to see how powerful you are. That really spoke to me because as you know, I love to build people up. (laughs) Even the conversation that I had with Aleem over Messenger, I'm not sure if it was in the writer's room or uh, Frank or personal message, but I just told, I was like, dude, you know, I just try to build people up. He said, yeah, a lot of people say that, but you guys actually do it. Like, phone, uh, (laughs) <laughs> fucking hit me dude you know, you right in the field uh, man <laughs> you know to hear that from a friend you know and especially a new friend like he he mentioned to me i can't i couldn't imagine that i've met a you know met so many new friends this late in my life and to a point i understand that because you've had a set set of friends you know you have a way of doing things and when you actually expand outward all the people who are just as supportive it's it's like a like a comfort a comforting blanket when you need yes. it like yep. infamously when i just lost my friend stan ringle um the people who commented on my post were my previous guests and my teacher like that meant well, I'm so sorry, much i didn't me. hear see your post so i'm sorry to hear uh, that thank you but it's yeah. it meant so much to me that i'm reaching out and i'm having these people on hey i want to have you back on friend request Okay, Mm -hmm. like, yes, they do want to be back on. And I'm 100% willing because I want everybody else to see how great that person is. It's one of the things that is a blessing of podcasting. It's something that even me and Frank, we all of us are on the same eye in that if we build everybody else up, we're all going to be better for it. And the the guests that I had on for my interview, Artemisia, she said that. She's like, when the, the tide comes in, all ships rise. Like, we're all here to support each other. And I like that analogy of, like, you know, we can all – success is not pie. Like, just because you have this piece doesn't mean that there's not enough for somebody else. Like, we can all be successful and we can all help each other. And I feel great when I like see somebody that I know is killing it. I'm like, yeah, I will be your biggest hype lady. Like I'm back here cheering you on. I love it. Oh, I see you, miss. I see you. I see you. I see the hype train. And that's that's what makes it. Because when like even as simple as a like, because one like is it's easier to actually pay attention to the post, to the video, to whatever you're putting out than no, none. So, oh, this has three likes. Oh, it has three likes. I'll click on that. Now, oh, that was good. That's a fourth. You know, just that kind of, you don't know who you're talking to when you do these podcasts. So, overall, just trying to have a positive blanket is usually a good safe bet. Yes, absolutely. You can't lose being a positive person. You know, like it it just raises the vibrations for everybody. So, I'm all about that. I'm all about the description of um, like anger is energy, you know, positive and Mm -hmm. negative. So if you're getting all this negative energy from your boss, from your wife, from, you know, this person, that person, traffic, there's all this kind of stress that happens in your life. It's negative energy and it affects you because 
you're at the receptacle. Now, if you have a lot of positive energy, like offsetting, there's a lot of negative energy on the internet. And there's an algorithm that loves to push you that way. That's also where yep. building people up, having a passion, and you know, overall having a positive message could make someone's life, not just their day. Exactly. And that's why I, I don't know if you've seen my uh, positive affirmations I do on my Instagram every morning. I do like one every morning and okay. I just try to start everybody's day with something happy, you know, and then we'll check it out now. I will now, but there's, I, yeah. I don't, I don't focus on Instagram. Like I know it's like connected to Facebook and, you know, I put I'll them on my Sydney Facebook as okay. well. Not my Sydney. Okay. I have too okay. many. Mm -hmm. It's at learning go go is the Instagram, but I always say negative things happen and it is also important to feel those feelings like there is a total, you know, toxic positivity is a thing too. as strange as that is to say that, but oh, you have to understand, yeah. you know, you're allowed to feel mad, you're allowed to be depressed, you're allowed to be sad, but don't live there, like learn the lesson, what, are, what can you gain from these feelings, and then draw upon the positive things in your life too. But don't dismiss them because it's important that those emotions are important as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because I hate when somebody is like, yeah, well, this happened and I had a bad day. Well, chin up, you know, well, wait, now I need to be here for a second. You know, like, mm -hmm. let me just deal. No, that person was a dick and now I'm mad. And, that, you know, but don't let it ruin your whole day, you know, well, or is yeah. the difference. Oh, I told I'll, I, I might as well say it. Say it now, Frank. Because I told Frank this story, I'll tell you the, 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 this the best part. Um, so when you're driving down the Blue Route, it goes out the three lanes at a portion, goes back down into two, and right down into oh, two. Oh, I'm very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> people, not often but frequently, will drive the shoulder. So I drive up the third lane because that's what it's for. I merge in. I'm not a dick. I pick a guy when I'm by the end. And I merge in with him. Now, that person respects me because he's not getting passed. So that's what sets up this story. I okay. see someone going down the shoulder. I poke my wide ass TL out in that shoulder. The truck stays right perfect. So we are blocking him in. We got a 90 degree angle going. It is a great looking 90 degree, degree angle. Pythagoras would be proud. So... This is the most Delco part. The driver of said, said van, like delivery van, beat up, like not one with pristine paint. It was mid it's like if I had a burn mark right here, you know, one of those Delco vehicles. Gotcha. Blares its horn, flashes its lights at me, and then leaves the high beams on like I was the problem. Sometimes extreme measures have to be taken for the betterment of the group. Yes. Because that person fell in line behind the truck and then continued onward. So he was planning on cutting through the, the off ramp, which is, like Frank said, so fucking New York. Keep that shit in New York. Do not bring that down to Delco. <laughs> right? Right. You know, I mean, sometimes people can really get wild in the car, even myself. Oh, yeah. But I feel like you have to re recognize it first and then actively think. I have when you're in the car. All right. Calm down. Stay calm. It's not that bad. Yes, they're an idiot. It's fine. Yeah. What I found is if you yell horn blows, does the driver. It kind of like makes me laugh and that I'm not mad anymore. So well, also remember that one too, you know. <laughs> Look, I, there's Dude, a difference that's, that's because bad. I work in the automotive industry. So when I say that, one of my coworkers <laughs> is gonna say, Yeah, for the right price. So there's a difference <laughs> in occupations. I mean, it, it, it's the positive vibe going. <laughs> that's why you know? I went to the, uh, the automotive industry because the work environment is generally so much friendlier yes. and so much more positive in the right place. I have talked about how they, they can be toxic before, but the right companies that I've been with that have that right mixture, it feels great to go to work. And that's important. Like you want to go and not dread work every day. Like, like I said, sometimes you got to have that in the trenches job to pay the bills. But if it's something you're planning on staying at long term, you don't want it to be torture every day, of course.
I worked at a particular dealership. I don't like to say on podcast the name of it. But I felt like, and I was a service advisor. Every day when I woke up, it felt like there was a hand grenade right here. That's what I told the doctor. That's a hand grenade yeah. right here. And I felt like it was going to explode at any moment. And the first thing my doctor said is, you might, after hearing about what I do in my day-to-day and experience, he's like, you, um, you might want to think about a different job. Yep. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I mean, it, this is my doctor saying it, so I mean, this must really be bad. I was, yep. I've been in that kind of a toxic work environment before, and it does really affect you. So picking now, I have two degrees. I have the luxury of having those pieces of paper, which make me a lot more attractive to an employer. People right. that don't have that have a severe disadvantage. And you may have to be in that toxic work environment. That's also where right. your passion can help ease that day to day. There's a lot of people that just trudge through that work day just so they could go home, spend time with their kids and their family, and impart in them the correct way of imparting things. It turns out it's not shouting at people. <laughs> Who knew? I don't know. Well, that's why Dolly Parton came out with five to nine. Did you guys hear that? That remake, she did nine to five years ago, but then she just released five to nine about doing your passion once you're out of the nine to five, like so that you can leave the nine to five behind if you turn your passion into your career. I might have to listen so. to that song now. I'm not going to lie. You're, you're turning me on to a lot of shit I got to listen to now. <laughs> yeah, see, and I don't have a degree. Like I went to college in 93 and then I went for my freshman year. And I decided to take a year off. Uh, it's been, what, 30 years? <laughs> I forgot to go back. So I don't have a degree. <laughs> but it's because I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Now, the difference. You know, like, I didn't have a passion to The difference between us that. is when I, I, was, I was right out of high school and I was going, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I was telling my, my ex fiance and my girlfriend at the time, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I just want to take a year off. She was like, no. I'll leave you. You either get a full time job or you go to school. So I was like, uh, auto career. It got my ass go. moving. Yep. You know, I, I, I stopped what I was I'm like. All right. I really got to focus on this and what I want to do. And I wanted to help people. So, all right, let me be a mechanic. Let me learn auto body. Let me be a service advisor. There and there were a lot of people, especially when I was in the service advising industry, because I was there to help you, not just beat you over the head and sell you useless work that you don't need. That's important. I got yeah. a lot of, I got a lot of thank yous. And even to this day, I've heard from my friend who still works at my last service advising gig that people still ask, ask about me, still ask for me. That's big. That's something that I was in Huge. of, I did not like where I was and where I was my, in my station there. Because of history that happened there, there was a lot of baggage that I had at that job that I'd shrug with me. So having those positive comments, oh, you're the, I always look for you, you're the best guy. That, that means something when you're talking to a service professional. They see everything. They get yelled at. They get threatened. They get cursed at on a daily basis, you know? Oh, yeah. And yep. well, what if, Oh, I'm sorry. Well, and not being directly in that now because I'm a parts guy. I see all this and I try to, you know, especially for new people in the auto industry, I usually try to be like a mentor to them because I had that mentor too. And having that mentality is also important as well. Absolutely. I was just going to ask Frank what your background is. Do you have degrees or are you like me and just. Uh, uh, public high school in New York City. That okay. says it all. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wanted to be an artist because um, uh, my parents separated and she, uh, my mother brought us all back to New York City. We're all from New York City, parents. And that's all I saw was art and different things of the city. And I go, wow, uh, uh, there was a bookstore called Forbidden Planet. I walked in there and I go, wow. And all those things that I saw uh, growing up, I wanted to be an artist. And uh, unfortunately, in the art class, the teacher that I had was doing like really 
you know, rip a mag, rip a, a page out of a uh, glamour magazine. Let's uh, draw this nose. Come to find out, it's been airbrushed beyond belief. I didn't find that until like ten years later. Didn't know right. that. So there's no features to draw. There's a hole and a bend on it. You know, that's it. So it really wasn't much. So I walked out with no ex- no knowledge of it whatsoever, and I had to apprentice. You know, learn it from somebody who did. Um, it was tough. It was a lot of fun. It was hilarious nonstop with some some of the artists. Um, but um, that's how I learned uh, my chops, you know, being that's someone's fun. like, hey, can you erase this, fill this in, clean these gutters up, and run it down to Marvel uh, in 20 minutes before 5 o'clock? <laughs> that's really helpful. My do. older daughter is actually um, a junior. She's going to college for animation so oh, like, nice. that's why i'm like curious you know very very proud of her oh, super nice yeah i mean yep. everything is nowadays i mean it's so animated from uh you know 3d cgi uh you know characters that are actually a live action movie but certain spots or certain shots are like cgi you know so that's fantastic and there's a big oh, market for that especially now looking in just what you see in the streaming market my uh cousin uh carl Dunan was actually an animator on Midnight Gospel, the Duncan Trussell animated series. So okay. he was working for Titmouse, and he ended up getting a you know getting to work on this, and I get to see oh, that's my cousin, that's my cousin, you know. So having that just as a family member, but also realizing like animators are very valuable. I know that because when I did Tales of the Morgue, Unfortunate Deaths and Unfortunate Ways. That Russian animator was still extremely expensive. That's why they were only like two minutes. Like, oh, I'm sure. Yep. <clears throat> you know, it but did, that's a valuable <laughs> talent. That uh, even yep. when I was talking to Corey Castle, we had this moment of, like, dude, I, I've always wanted somebody to like get to a, 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 that pinnacle, that level to where <laughs> a fan or somebody like animates my podcast. Like a moment, <laughs> a funny moment. Like that would be. The perfect thing. So there's a big market for that animation. Absolutely. Yeah. And she's really talented. So I'm like, oh, awesome. baby fly, you know. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really cool. I was just curious, you know, what your backstory was too. And I know like what I paid for cover art, like it's, you, you can make a good living, you know, and it's worth every penny because art is priceless. You know, people's talent. Yes. I couldn't draw it. So. <laughs> oh yeah, me either. Yeah. Um, but the book, I saw it was pretty much available out there wherever you can buy the book. Are you going to be looking into an audio version? I would love to make an audio version. And now that because I want to narrate it, you know, maybe it's as you should conceded, but no, it's my voice. Sh- it's not and there's conceded. A lot of- it's your book. People want to hear you read your book. I, I am right, a and there's a lot of sydneyisms in there. <laughs> so I don't think people could read it the way that I would say it because exactly. you know I'm the, the smartassness and stuff. Like, is you had to be there. To, there's certain to get yeah. mannerisms and way you inflectuate your voice when you say things when you're talking about a memory. That's why, especially with books, I'm with Rogan on this one. I want to hear the author because Absolutely. it gives a depth. I'm hearing you speak. So now, as a fan, I hear you're in my town. I'm more willing to go out and visit you. Like, hey, man, I love your book. This is great. You know, it's that it's adding an onion layer. Where, where, find you? Where, where, where are we going to find you? What uh, yes. conventions, cons? Where are we going to? Fi- where can they? Where can they be? Where can you be hunted? You know, to get your um, book. Tell me, where can I sign up to be hunted? I'm I'm looking for ideas. I've been asking people. I need book fairs. I need you know. Get me into Barnes and Noble, but I will be at um, Great Media Comic Con, but not as yeah. the author. I w- I'm super happy to talk about my book. I will have copies in the trunk of my truck if you want to buy some. Um, <laughs> but I'm not officially there for that, so I don't want to plug it like right. I am and be okay. disingenuous. But hey, having um, your product on hand if somebody wants to yeah, buy your book, I mean, is it I have, you? I, it's you. I so walked hey. around. So funny story. I went, I met Frankie at um, the Camp Out for Hunger for MMR. Oh, That's okay. how yeah. we connected. And I showed up with a bag with a couple books 
And I'm like, I'm just going to, because I had sent copies to everybody at Preston and Steve when I first published it last year. I'm like, please read it. I sent it to um, News, you know, Fox 29, like all the people that I watch every day. I'm like, please, you know, I want to share with you kind of thing. Um, so I went to the camp out and I had a couple and I met Danny Briere. I gave him a copy. Like I am the biggest gorilla marketer. I have bookmarks. Let me grab them. This is the old one I have um, with my QR code. I leave these in ladies' rooms, in trucks, like in rest stops, in like, because if you're a woman and you're in the bathroom and you're sitting there, you're going to get bored and you're going to want to know what this QR code is about. Really? That's, so, that, that, that's really good. That's great. Brilliant. Yeah. So I will like come up and I went to the live concert with the goal of getting my book in Ed Kowalczyk's hands. And I did. That's awesome. I, he posted a picture of me and him and my book on his Instagram. Like I will, I am not shy about, Hey, I would love to give you a copy. You know, like if mm -hmm. it's somebody that can talk about it and help get me out there, but I'm having trouble getting traction for things like, like I went to a book fair in Collingswood in Jersey and Angelo Cataldi and Mike Missinelli were there and, you know, like we exchanged information and stuff, but I haven't been able to find resources for where to go as an author to get my book out. So that's why yeah. like the podcast helps with that as well. Having my yeah. own and being a guest is like, well, I would say helping to you, helping me. continue doing what you're doing because cross podcast promotion really matters because when that person you're cross promoting, somebody in their friend group says, Oh, hang on, let me check this out. Even if it's one person, that's how you yep. gain the, the audience. I've always looked at podcasting as it's not something to make money. It's something to do because you love doing it. It brings you joy. And hopefully you help somebody in the, at the other end. But overall, it's entertainment. And it to just automatically assume, oh, my God, I've been doing this for like six weeks and I, I'm not making any money. That's the wrong way to no. go about <laughs> it. You have to have passion about it. So going to Absolutely. other people who have that passion – Hey, I got a book. I'd love to be on your podcast. You know, even just me finding out from just reaching out to people that I want to be on my podcast, it's like, oh my God, I got this guy. This is so great. You know, it's yep. it's really, it's putting yourself out there, I think, is enough and that people will see you and say, I need to learn more. I need to know how a preacher's daughter pole dances her way to finding her true self. It's a, yes. as far as marketing, that's a great tagline. You know what I'm it's a great, it's a great story. And yeah. my website is learnedingogo.com. Like I'm trying to make sure everything's learned in Gogo so it's easy to find, you know, because my name I stripperized it when I picked Sydney. So that's why it's S Y D N E E. You know, like you have to have I didn't have the I with the heart, so I went with the E E, you know. <laughs> solid choice, solid choice, you know. Yeah. Hey, you Google yeah, Projangers, so it's it's only us. So, you know, there's a, a, a smart marketing, you know, uh, thought there. You know, hey, yeah. I have to be a little bit different. Uh, you know the name Sydney, but E-E. Exactly. exactly. Double E. But that's yeah. why I'm enjoying the podcast is because I love sharing fun information. I love helping people. That's why I do my positive affirmations every day. Um, and they're live. So they're sometimes a trip. I've had my dogs knock my tripod over in the middle, you know, and it's, I've always been very, I'm me. I might just screw this up royally and we're all just going to laugh about it. Who cares? Like, I'm just going to throw it out there and have fun. And that's, you know, some of the stories I tell in the book are about times when I did that on stage in front of, you know, like a room full of people and I wound up on my ass on the, like, Stuff happens and you got to just enjoy your life and try to learn as you go and share your knowledge. You have to be teachable, but you also have to be willing to help those coming up as well. Yeah. So. That's an, that's yeah, an important I, bit of knowledge is to be coachable. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why, like, I also talk about I still dance once a week or work out. So, um, you know, it's me and the cleaning lady. We go in before the bar opens and just like I bring my my iPod and plug it in. You know, it's it's an important part of who's made me me now that when I was growing up in the church, I never saw coming. So it's kind of like connecting that 
But it's also kind of like, are you guys familiar with Wicked? Not familiar. The Broadway with. play? Oh, oh, Broadway. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, okay. Right, right. It kind of has some of that how sometimes bad things happen in the quote unquote good places, but then you have good experiences in the quote unquote bad places. Mm -hmm. So it kind of has that angle as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, so. from what I've experienced, it's you have to know the person that you're interacting with. Especially understanding that that person is just a ball of trauma that whoever fucked them up just left you with, okay, in yes. any given moment. So thank you, man. That's 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 a very reasonable assessment, I have to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> Somebody fucked this piece of paper up, and they're like, "Here, you deal with it." Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we all have our own our own traumas. You know, like nobody's gone through life without having something happen to them Love in you, some capacity. The worst yeah. thing to happen to you is the worst thing to happen to you. Oh my <laughs> God, this is the worst day. Dude, the the worst thing to happen to me today, which actually means I was having a pretty good day. I was going to the bathroom at work and there was they have this heavy metal door and I swung it and I, I realized it was too hard. So I go to put my finger in the way and I just slam the tip of my finger. The very tip. That hurts. Yeah. That was the worst thing. That hurt. That hurt That's a lot. Hurt. Yeah. Oh my god. Yep. I'm I'm fine though. I'm fine. The finger is still tight. It typed out fine. They'll, they'll need a fingerectomy. You good? <laughs> no, I need a bacchiotomy, <laughs> but the fingerectomy is, you know, that's on hold. <laughs> at least for now. No, yeah. I've I've slammed <laughs> these hands in car doors to where my pointer fingers are actually tilted. Nope. Yeah, I got them too. I mine are but you you do shit in life. Childhood. Yeah, you do shit in, with the hands, and it, it shows. You know, but absolutely. That's also why I'm not a mechanic anymore. I saw that guy with the, with those arthritis hands and the hunchback, and he's pulling out transes like in an hour. I was like, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. No, <laughs> no, but good mechanics are very valuable. I had a okay. friend that fancied himself a mechanic, and I made the mistake of letting him work on my car. This was back teenage years and everything was either it didn't matter what was wrong with your car it was the brakes or the distributor cap so i let my brother borrow my car who may or may not have had a license at the time and <laughs> when i got it back i started it and it just took off and it would not i'm hitting the brakes and nothing you know it's, i'm like jesus get into a parking lot pull the emergency brake shut it off because like it was not stopping so my friends got my engine on the distributor cap. And I, I look under the firewall had fallen on my accelerator. I said, put my engine back together. There is nothing wrong. Child. So yeah. that is why I, to this day, carry a roll of paper towels in my car to prop up the firewall should it ever fall onto my accelerator again. Because cool. I am teachable. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it may be a new car, but, you know. <laughs> well, that was my 77 Skyhawk. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah, yeah I, I got that from a teacher and it said honk please on one side. It said the love machine across the other side. The first time I got pulled over in it, the cop laughed his ass off at me and then called for backup to come and laugh at my car. <laughs> and I'm, you sorry. Know, I'm sorry, you bought that from a teacher? Hundred bucks. <laughs> that's it, you know. Please. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, had, I, I had I had my car. I don't care. I laugh at my shoes. I, I had a hundred dollar car as well. I bought an yep. eighty nine Cutlass Sierra. Okay, now there was the on the driver's side rear door. You could actually reach your hand in and wiggle your fingers into the cabin because a deer tackled the car. This is what my buddy told me when he he was selling me this car. He said. The deer tackled the car. I said, how does a deer tackle a car? He said, well, the rear sway bar is broke in half. I was fine oh. with this purchase. <laughs> My mother was with me and co-signed on this purchase for a $100 car. So right. I had a buddy who fancied himself a mechanic as well. And <laughs> to drive around because I was the friend who had his own car now. Yes. We had to make this work. So we f he was like, dude, we got to fix the sway bar. I was like, well, how do we do that? Replace it? He's like, no. Duct tape. So. 
Duct tape and snot glue. You can fix anything on a car. We would go to, we had like a little piece of sheet metal and it was flimsy as shit. It might have been like something we found on the side of a road and duct tape. And we could tell when the duct tape snapped because then that, that the whole car would sway like this as you're driving and accelerating. And then it would be duct me and my buddy tape. and his brother. And I would be yelling at this kid and like, sit in the middle. And he'd sit <laughs> in the middle and it'd kind of be safe and be like, all right, see, it's a normal sway now. Wow. I drove it like that until there are an, on suspension. OK, there are these cross members that literally keep your axle attached to the car. I drove it until one of them snapped in half. And then the other one had like literally a finger length left. I know this. Because as I'm playing video games on my TV, my dad comes up to me and says, let me show you something. I know from experience, this is going to be a learning lesson. Yes. He said, I, want, I want you to get under that car. I want you to see what I, what I did to fix this. He put a, like a steel tube. I don't know how, but he got the fit around the sway bar. Welded it. He took like an inch thick steel plate and welded it to the cross members. He's going to, and he says to me, You could drive to work where I worked at Wawa. So that was a 20 minute drive. Probably safe. You drive to work Probably. and you could drive home. That's it. I ended up getting a whole rear assembly, probably used for like a couple hundred bucks at the time. And I just, I, I drove the balls off it until I sold it to his friend. And I fancied myself a, uh, you know, a person who could hook up cars with systems. So I had the aftermarket CD player in there and he was like, Hey, he's telling me the headlights don't work. I was like, take it to a mechanic. I, I don't know. I had, well, <laughs> I had electrical tape and a lighter. There you go. Well, you can MacGyver lots of things that way, but that same friend that I had put my system in and it was like great until I hit a bump and then I had no music anymore until I hit another bump. So I finally took it to an actual like person that <laughs> put stereo systems in. Their question was, how drunk was this dude when he put in your stereo? That's what they asked me because it was so bad. I'm like, okay, oh my sorry, God. we're not going to ask him for car favors anymore. <laughs> But so, that's just, it teaches you, you I'm get so what you pay for. Question. Yes. No, you get well, what you pay for. You really do. Oh, if you take your car to Jiffy Lube, there's a chance he doesn't tighten the oil plug. And you may be getting a free engine. Right. <laughs> but that engine was installed by Jiffy Lube. So, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I had to get a new engine twice. Mm. Oil's important, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure your engine has enough of it. Um, I love... Camaros, like 84 to 91 style, that's, mm -hmm. I love them. They're my yeah. favorite. I've had three. Oh. 84 to 91 Ew. Camaro is a really great car. My brother yes. and I do yes. lug nuts, as you've seen. So, yeah, that's, that's, I like yep. your car choice. Very nice. Thank you. Yes, I've had an 84, an 85, and a 91. Um, but I had to replace the engine in one, and I, I took it to Pep Boys because I didn't know. And it, I think it was like $1,700 and I paid for it in ones because <laughs> when you're a dancer, you got a lot of dollar bills and you should have seen their face when I'm like, it's, it's legal tender. That's what I got. <laughs> so I had to sit there while they counted out like $1,749 in ones. Yeah, right. I'm not going to lie. That is, yep. that's a tall order. That's a tall order. <laughs> but you want the money. There it is. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm paying you. <laughs> That's your right. job. The final part. Yeah. Count the money. <laughs> right. Yep. Are you a waitress? Yeah. Wink. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, tips, you know? <laughs> sure. I'm waiting on you to count these ones. I'm a waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry the hell up. Well, let's go. Wow. Wow. That's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> have, your, have your money ready, folks. Have your money ready. But um, Exactly. And that's what's interesting. Like, just side note, because Pop's. Mm -hmm. Things pop in my head and come out my mouth. But inflation has happened in so many other areas, but people will still give a dancer a dollar bill. Yes. Like, and that's been going on how many decades now? Like, 
one. Uh, probably one of the oldest professions. I would think so. Because people so. love entertainment. So Absolutely. in all of the definitions of that, there's always been a market, you know, supply and demand. I failed Absolutely. economics, but, you would but I learned that. that. Mark up, you know, like at least. And that's well, what I used to want the guys want, that, want to keep dancing. So that dollar is just long enough. So they only got like maybe 50 bucks. So if they gave you. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yep, stop exactly. dancing, you know? That's all right. what I mean. Okay. Like, you know, Where? okay. Keeps the yeah. whole show going. That's all. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. But it's like, okay, come on, dude. You know, like you've been staring. It's also you know? rude that's to love, throw like, change. So. You know, and you know, I've been hit in the head with a lime wedge. Like people are dicks, and what? I had one guy. As you you go for the three, you know, the one, two, three, and I went for the three, and you can't see unless you're Linda Blair what's going on behind you. Mm. So I like went to walk away. It was a freaking Burger King receipt. Are you kidding me? A Burger King receipt to the crack. That's just rude. And it wasn't even a good rude. place. Burger King, really? Yeah. And exactly. all the receipts, you could give her a Lowe's right. receipt, like a uh, construction. Yeah, worker. You had it on hand. You know, have it your way is not. No. no. Oh, thanks. Yeah. A, fat, a receipt for a fat, lazy slob. Thank you. That Thank meant you. a right? lot. Thank you for your troll. That, that's his karma. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, I, I do. Let, I enjoy it. And I, I, I gotta say, I wasn't a real podcast until I got a dislike. You know, uh, uh, on YouTube, it it it's it really affirms like okay, those are real. A year ago, it came up in my memories when I got my first hater for a, an ad about my book, and they were like, "You're just a nasty pole dancer." I was like, "Yes, my yeah. first hater. I'm legit now." Like, I was so excited. Like, good. You shouldn't have everybody like you. Give me a few more. You know, that's all I wanted. You know, if, you tell here. everybody how much I suck. Like, just if because everyone, there's no bad publicity. Yeah. If everyone yeah. is telling you, like, oh, my God, you're so great. You suck. Exactly. You, you suck. Yeah. Like, everyone said, oh, my God, no, you're doing amazing. They're not even watching. They're just turning their head. Like, hey, Exactly. They're, they're just trying to, like, pat you on the head. Like, here you go. Yeah. You know? Good no. Job. That's why I was, I was, like, literally, like, cracking up. Like, yes. It happened. So. I'm going to screenshot always- this image and put it right on my fridge. Yeah, exactly. I have a little frame, you know. Yeah. It's like when I got my bartending license and I have my first dollar bill, you know, I can have. And this oh, is my no, first, really? you my know first what? transcript of my first podcast is in oh, here. Frankie oh, made it awesome. for me. Okay. So oh, That's awesome. I also yeah. have framed um, my tie that they cut because it's a tradition when you sell cars, they cut your tie when you sell your first car. So I have the cut oh, portion of the that. tie in... A frame. A good tie. All right. Good, so what? It, what happens with it, it, women? It, it was a Lord and Taylor tie. No, 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 not Lord and Taylor. I, I didn't know I was going to sell a car, Frank. It was. Yeah, a, I get it. It was a tie either Steve or my dad gave me. I was like, I don't know. Like, oh, and then I mentioned it to one of the sales managers. He gave me forty bucks. Like, all right, this is cool. I'm not buying another tie, but I feel compensated now for my grief. On the free tie. So are the I got. women also wearing ties, or do you cut? What happens? No, it was very sexist. It was just the guys that got their t- their t- son of a bitch. I'm just picturing like blouses getting like. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah, no. HR would have. I'm like, what? What do you do with the women? I don't understand. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. HR in most dealerships actually pretty on point. Pretty on point. Okay. I got told at my last car dealership job. This is a breaking story. Uh, breaking memory. <laughs> Um, <laughs> at my last job, uh, one time I got told I was not empathetic enough. Okay. So, you know, I'm direct. It's, I, I'm not going to put up with your bullshit. So, uh, they may have something there, but the other time I got taken into the office with the head of HR and the service manager, because I wasn't allowed to tell this woman <laughs> who was incredibly annoying. One of those people who they just, it's like, they don't fucking stop and she's like i don't know what do you think about this i said i think you should sit the fuck down and do your fucking job and apparently (laughs) you're not allowed to say that at work gotcha who knows i'm learning so much (laughs) my my older brother when we were growing up like i grew up in jersey so the gas stations are all full serve 
Mm-hmm. And he was a guest attendant. And the guy that owned that gas station owned all of them on the strip. So he, there was no HR because he knew if you got mad, you'd just go to one of his other stations. So he really didn't care. So this woman was like, and it wasn't my brother, it was another one of them, told her to, you know, you need to shut the fuck up and get the hell out of here. And she's like, I'm going to speak to your manager. And da, 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 da. So the manager comes out and he's like, what's going on? And she's like, your your gas attendant just said this and all. He's like, I can fix this right now. You need to shut the hell up and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's Jersey. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. Yep. It's that grew North- up in Jersey and now I'm in Delco. So it's the northeastern know. quadrant just kind of breeds a specific kind of people that no, uh, no, I'm not yeah. doing that. No, 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 and we bust balls because we love you. Like that's yeah. you know that's how we show love. So. If someone is like I just said, if someone is always nice to you, they don't like you. They're right. being polite. You yeah. like them because oh, they're polite. Yeah. You don't want to hear what that person they're talking to at your job knows what they said about you. Right. They're, oh my God, that guy is such a fucking dick. <laughs> yep. So there is that yeah, kind of pettiness there. But overall, I mean, sometimes it's deserved. And you know you've made it if you have a nickname. Like, everybody that you're, you're talking shit on gets a nickname. Like, when I used to bartend, me and this other bartender, the same guy would come in all the time. He was a pain in the ass. So we'd always card him, even though we knew he was old enough, because he lived around the block. So he'd have to walk home to get his license and come back every time. Like, dude, you know we're going <laughs> to card you. But it turned into this game. And uh, she's like, yeah, you'd think he would be like psychic by now. And no, and I said, no, he's Nostra dumbass. Like, he doesn't understand. He can't predict this. So he was Nostra dumbass for like years. That was his nickname. Yeah, and I it think, was because you know, the, those yeah, nicknames yeah. will really fucking stick because there's this one nickname it can't leave my head as much as I've tried. But old man Walt gave me the best advice I ever got. I was working at a Kia dealer, and he goes, "You see that guy? You want to be that guy? Find something you love to do and do it." He said, "You know why I work here? Because I'm bored." I was like, <laughs> "Okay." <laughs> he showed me a picture of his basement. So like, let me show you a picture of my basement. His entire basement around the, the perimeter and in the center are filled with rare arcade machines. He said, one of those machines on any given day can go for 12 grand. I fix them up and I sell them. Find nice. something you love to do and do it. Otherwise, you're going to turn into that guy. <laughs> fucking, lo- fucking love old man Walt. Gave me that nice bit of information. <laughs> But he also gave me the best God did it. This nickname was so fucking good. It was this tech who every goddamn car he worked on needed struts. Everything needed a fucking strut. So he called him Bagowitz. Bagowitz. And then the Cage the Elephant song came on of uh, 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 no, uh, no Rest for the Wicked. Mm-hmm. And he would say, he's Bagowitz. And he would just parody the song to where the song still echoes in my head but that nickname and i i can still see that guy's face in there that nickname really solidifies a person that absolutely you're like oh my god bagowitz fucking remember you bro bagowitz but you, you're <laughs> like oh hey man what's going on we work back at key to go you'll fucking never remember him as anything else <laughs> other than bagowitz <laughs> yep those nicknames can haunt you forever Oh, yeah, I yes. think about Big Bang Theory when uh, Howard wanted to be Rocket Man, but then the other astronauts heard him talking about Fruit Loops, so they named him Fruit Loops. And he was like, No, I'm Rocket Man. They're like, Whatever, Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> a nickname will definitely haunt you. It'll definitely haunt Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, but... Well, it's funny because in, in the book, I talk about names because in mm-hmm. the one bar where I worked, where I, I love dive bars because when you work in a dive bar and you have teeth, you are like a fucking goddess, you know, like you are automatically top bill because of the environment. So I love me some dive bars. And that's the way that this bar was. If there was an ass in every bar stool, you might've had a full set of teeth. Love these guys. And so it was Sydney and then there was Cindy and then there was Cynthia and then there was Sadie. And the DJ sounded like he had 
like marbles in his mouth and he'd be like da, 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 Sydney and I'd go up he's like I said Cindy I'm like I thought you said Sydney you know and then it's just Sadie and I got I said say I'm like enunciate your words so I finally was like fuck it call me Bob I'm like and then I'll know you're talking to me so for like a month it's and up next is the very sexy Bob and I would go on stage so there's probably guys to this day that call me Bob because I couldn't figure out if he was talking to me or Cindy or Sadie or Cynthia. So I was like, you know what? Whatever. I'll be Bob. Bob. Yeah, I'll be Bob. Yep. It's fine. Hey, Bob. Yo. 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 Bob. There's worse. Th- I've been called much worse things than Bob. Well, yeah. I'm still so. known uh, by a select few in the automotive uh, industry as Billy Amps. Billy Amps. Is that the stereo side there? Uh, no, that was I was going to school at ATC for auto collision repair with my friend Moy. And before I like I literally signed up for the school and they had this uh thing for the guy uh, for the guys that were going there already that list five of your friends and their phone numbers and you may win tickets to the auto show. <laughs> VIP tickets. Oh my god. So he lists my name as well as one of our friends names. Um, but with, well, my phone number and one of our friends. So with my name, he wrote the name Billy Ams because he thought it was a funny name. Right. So he wins. He gets auto show tickets. And he tells me the story. Like, oh, my God. So now all these guys who knew I was going to be going there, they kept referring to me as Billy Ams. So for my entire time at ATC, I was Billy Ams. And it extended out into the automotive world to where my the other friend who my, my buddy boy mentioned, he got a phone call and, you know, they were like, hey, you know, you want, we want you to come in and check out the school, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you were referred by your friend, boy, hey, d- do you know this guy, Bill Yams? And he laughs because we told him the story. And the guy and he realizes, like, this guy's serious on the other fo- side of the phone. And he goes and he's right. <clears throat> Um. Yeah, you know, I think he works at UPS or something. It's like, does he have a? De- did he graduate from high school? Does he have a degree? He's like, oh, I don't know. So already, this character is alive, right? So my friend, because we're going to ATC, he makes his Twitter handle at Billy Ams. So we're we're hanging out. We're going around McDonald's, and he starts cracking the fuck up. And I'm like, what? Because look at this message I just got on Twitter look at it and it's this person who messaged why do you have my name there was a oh, real no. bill yams so then i changed my twitter to at the real bill yams and it oh, was no. like that for years because i just don't go on twitter or x or whatever it is like right it, it, it was uh, i switched i switched it over to something like pj and wh madman or something but i was the the real bill yams on Twitter right. for years. So this fake name. And then I'm in these auto dealership jobs and they're like, Bill? Yams? <laughs> like, yeah, what's going on? You know, why did he call you Bill Yams? So I started calling it the legend of Bill Yams. There you go. So that's, that's a great, look, great it, tale there. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's also the beauty of podcasting is I've forgotten about like, half of these stories because of life and my normal day to day. And that's one of the things that's beautiful about this form is that it brings out the best in you because you're remembering all these great times, all this stuff. And then it's somebody else like you, Oh, I had this time and you connect on a level that people don't see on other formats. It's people actually yeah. having a normal conversation where some guests, exactly. when I have them on, they're like, Oh, I, you know, I've never done a podcast before. Do you need anything? And like, dude, it's a conversation. It's mm-hmm. me, you, and Frank. That's it. It's where yep. that's what I try to keep it as. I don't try to do. There's a lot of different people who have you know different shticks or gimmicks on podcasts, which is fine. It works for them. But yep. on this one, this is a soapbox, so I try to keep it like that. Yep, and that's how I came across when I did my interview. When she was like, "Well, how do you do it?" I'm like, "Well, you're popping my cherry, so we're gonna see how I do it." Um, <laughs> I've never done this before, but I said, "I just figured we'll have a conversation. Like, give me any points that I can help promote you. Like, you know, steer me in the right direction to do that." 
learningogo.com. But aside from that, you know, like yeah. we're just going to talk, you know, and I'm laughing because you're talking about nicknames. And now I'm thinking of all of these people I haven't thought of. Like you said, there's this kid we called pliers for like really horrible reasons. And like, I'm like, I wonder what pliers is up to. I haven't thought of him in a million years. And then my brother had another friend whose mom they just called Moo. And I'm just like, I wonder what Moo's up to. But his friend, I remember because we used to tell um, really bad pickup lines. And the one was, you know, do you like apples? I'm going to fuck you today. How you like them apples? And I'm like, don't say that, you know. And his friend could never get it. And he's like, do you like broccoli? Let's fuck. I'm like, that's not how it works. Like, that's not. <laughs> you don't understand the way. You know. So I just was thinking of him. And he had a nickname, too. And I can't think of it right now. And it's oh, bugging me. I hope like... it's broccoli. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's something. I feel like it had something to do with cereal. Yeah. And I don't remember now. <laughs> But it's just funny the things you remember. Oh, man. That, like, yeah, that is that was good. was back in high school. Yeah. <laughs> that is yep. so good. Uh, but we do want – if pe- we know where people can hunt you. And it's right on your podcast, p- the podcast yes. learned in a go-go. And they can also find your book in the parking lot. No, but they can find you and get your book. <laughs> I mean, you're available on, on Amazon. It's a store. Uh, pop that trunk. Books available standing in front. It's, exactly. It's yes, I have. I have books. I have bookmarks. If you buy a personalized copy from me off of my website, learningogo.com, you get the personalized copy. You get the bookmark. You also get a free companion playlist, which is all songs that I mention in the books, songs I used to dance to, and now I've been adding ones that I like to use on Thursdays as well. So a little just like, Mm -hmm. thank you. And if you're in the U.S. and get free shipping, I learned the hard way not to offer free shipping to everyone. Yeah, that's a rough one. That's a rough lesson to learn. I suggested that in my my old company because we had uh, merchandise. And I was just like, well, why not do it everywhere? He was like, no, U.S., no no Alaska, no Hawaii, continental U.S., that's yeah, it. yeah. When you're selling a book for twenty bucks and you're paying thirty to ship it, that's not a good business. No, so, you so know, it, and it's it does it make sense. Me four years to write it. I'd I'd like to, you know. Absolutely, but, it's you but, put your time and effort into it, so there is a value to it, and not going over and above to put you in the hole <laughs> is how you keep going forward. So it's smart exactly. business practice. And, Yep. And I, you know, like I spent the first year trying to get it out there and now I'm finally starting to get traction. Cause like you said, it's not with the podcast. It's not, I'm going to have a podcast and now I have a million people. Like it doesn't work that way. And I'm just having fun with it. Yeah. Honestly, like, and I, everybody that's coming along for the ride, I appreciate so much. Like keep, keep showing up and listening. It's going to be a good time. Might be ridiculous. You might learn something. You never know. You never know who you're going to learn a lesson off of because my dad told me a long time ago, it's good to learn from your own mistakes, but it's better to learn from the mistakes of others. Somebody else. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That guy fucked there up. There you go. I shouldn't do yeah. that. That doesn't look fun. <laughs> no, no, definitely like be very, you know, looking around and taking what's going on around you because there's all kinds of things to learn from. Absolutely. And it's also fun to be a shenanigator. I love inciting shenanigans. That's like one of my favorite things to do. So, hundred yeah. percent. You know, you gotta have fun. Why not? Exactly. Life's too short to be miserable. It is. It is too short. But a lot of people they just get hung up in their own day to day. I think that you, you get into a swirl. Even I've gotten there. Like even through podcasting, there are highs and lows, you know, and it's very easy to just get soaked up in your own troubles and wallow in your, you know, wallowing things. But I've been fortunate to have people that I can reach out to, to help pull me out of that slump. Like, Hey man, absolutely. This ain't you. Yep. community. Community is very important. And the people that you surround yourself with are the people that are going to have the most influence on you. So If your circle doesn't have your back, you need a new circle. Absolutely. You know, and a lot of us hold on to people. I was talking about this on my positive affirmation this morning. Um, Just because they've been there, but 
you know, you you can't hoard people. Like, you know, you don't have to hold up. Well, I've known them since, and that's great, and be very appreciative for the time that you had. But if they're now becoming a negative influence, you can't just keep yeah. them around because they've been there. You know, realizing... I don't wear my gar animals because I've had them since 76. You yeah, know, like, it's... You can't... <laughs> It's also, it's realizing that some of those friends might have been toxic. They might not have, may have, maybe they have grown toxic. They're not the same person that you know. And they've let Absolutely. life corrupt them in a way that, yep. you know, I, I try to keep myself positive and be an over, overall an optimist. Because, you know, it's real easy to focus on the negative. But oh, yeah. to find a good thing. Pull yourself out of even like a bad thought, a bad day. Was it a bad day? Well, uh, it's it actually maybe like five minutes, ten minutes mm -hmm. throughout the day. Yep. Then realizing like, all right, well, I, I just got to let that go. It's like emptying the recycling bin folder on your computer. Like, ah, oh, get rid right. of that shit. Oh, and it, it comes to the point where like, you know, I, I'm a big helper. I, I call it broken wing syndrome. I'm always trying to fix the hurt bird, you know, but... I liken it to if you if you turn the corner in your house every day and you walk into a brick wall, like how many times are you going to keep doing that before you realize that it hurts you to keep doing that same activity? Like not everyone is in a position where they're open to being helped. I don't know. About three, four more attempts. I'll let you know if it works. Yeah, exactly. Like this time, now that I have no skin on my nose, I'm yeah. going to keep walking, into, you know. So it, it comes to that point, and I hate like getting to that point where it's just like because I want to help everybody. I want everybody to be growing and you know like positive, but not everybody's in a space to be that way. So you can't fix not every my job. Car. Yeah, you can't fix every yeah, car. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> you know because sometimes it's not the distributor cap. It's not. I often <laughs> I often liken life to a highway. Um, you know. You want to ride it all night long. You're a, car, you're a car, Frank's a car, I'm a car. We're driving down the highway. Going to pop off. off. Going to pop off at an exit. There's going to be somebody on the, on the side of the road with a flat tire or, heaven forbid, you know, a blown engine. But you have people in the right lane, in the Ferrari, in the left lane, zooming by. Hopefully not the right lane. Zooming by. And absolutely not the shoulder when I'm around. But... Right. <laughs> Everybody is in a different car. Realizing that is the flow of life helps. Yep. The windshield is bigger than the rear view for a reason. You have to focus on where you're going. You have to maintain the car so you can keep driving down the road. It's a really great metaphor. You can almost have like a full podcast just on it. There you go. That's true. Yep. And you got to learn when you need maintenance to keep going. Absolutely. You know? Mental health yeah. is a very, very important thing that I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to in this country, especially with just you know, the past guests that I've had on, um, you know, from paratroopers to, you know, James Stokes, who was EMT. You know, there's a lot of people who are in these trenches and they're in these bad situations. Extending out a passion whenever they have time, because those jobs are really, you know, kind of intensive, especially paratrooping yeah. i don't think you have much time for knitting <laughs> that, out of that would be safe. <laughs> <laughs> but i honestly like i think that mental health should be like the same as physical health you should get checkups you should have you know it shouldn't be like why should that be in a lesser category it's in a lot of ways even more important because when you neglect your mental health it starts to take a physical toll on you as well i talk very openly about my depression about my anxiety and the depression started when I was about 12. The anxieties new, you know, like, let's let's jump on too. That'll be fun, you know. So I've been like learning with ways to deal with that. Anxiety and, uh, has added itself to your cart. Oh, thank you. Anxiety. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's like, oh, uh, is this it? No, back pain. Okay. <laughs> let's, what else can we get in? You know, <laughs> yeah, but you, know. you just, it's, you know what? It's better than the alternative. I'm still above ground, so I'll take it. Yeah. But I, I tell this story. I had a therapist that I loved. His name was John. He was this pop up, but he would call me on my bullshit, you know, and that's what I need. I don't need a there, there. It'll be OK. I need, you know, you're full of shit and this is why and this is what you need to do. And I loved him for that because that was the approach that I needed. And then one day I got a call, you know, and they're like, oh, we're calling about your appointment with John. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, I call back. I'm like, hi, I have an appointment with John tomorrow. And they're like, oh, 
he passed away. And I'm like, do you know what the worst thing for your depression is when your therapist dies? Like, that was horrible. And I, I was never yeah, able I to Yeah, I that up to a loss. With... Yeah, in the loss column. Yeah, there. I'm like, yeah. he didn't want to see you so bad. <laughs> no. I'm just yeah, like, uh, it's just like, oh, what's wrong with you? Go talk to a therapist. <laughs> he died. Like, oh, Jesus. Exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. And then they gave me the, the they're there lady, and mm -hmm. it just wasn't a good a good match, yeah. but it's important to take the time to find someone who is a good match because it's not always go. You know, well, I called and I tried to get a therapist and I didn't like them, so I didn't call again. No, you got to keep trying. I've had doctor, you know, like physical doctors that aren't a good match. So it's important, you know, like we're all worth taking the time to find good people to help us to be our best. Yeah. So, hundred percent. This has been That's about my, as, as sorry, I get as, about like. No, this has been about as positive a podcast as I as I was chalking it up to. So right on par, right on par. Positive positivity wise, you know, we're good. We're good. It's oh, good. Excellent. Yeah. My uh, cards I use in the morning, they're called affirmators and they're like little cartoons with the, the message and they're really funny. And a Facebook friend I've never met in real life gifted them to me. She mailed them to me. Awesome. She was just like, I think you would like these. And so I'm always like, and these are affirmators. I have no affiliation. If you'd like an affiliation, please reach out. Affirmator people, you know, like, mm -hmm. but it's like, I just think they're fun. And I like to share things that have helped me. So that's, you know, that's how I go about my, my life. Well, that's nice. with, like I mentioned before, the normal toxicity that, and just, Clickbait to make you angry that you see on yes. social media. It's important to follow and have people who are going to put that positive message out there. So you know your feed is not just, well, when is China attacking? What's Russia doing? It's not doom and gloom. It's, you know what? Maybe I should take some time. You know, get out in the sun. Yes. Let that's why I on purpose. Hit your skin. Get some sun rays, people. You don't have to pop vitamin D. Get out there. Enjoy the fucking sun, not melanoma level. <laughs> safely, safely enjoy. Skin the sun. cancer is still not sexy. No. I, I, last I but checked. That's, um, no, not not really. But I purposefully have made sure my news feeds my, you know, like, and of course, if I'm having a uh, actual like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna talk without crying so i actually have an instagram that is just for my pets i have two labs and then until the 13th i had a guinea pig named stanton amadeus fluffernutter and he he was awesome but he passed away and so you know i posted about that because i posted about him all the time mm -hmm. so people knew you know and the amount of people that reached out to me about my guinea pig like and people as a guinea pig no he was awesome and i used to dress him up in costumes and he put up with my shenanigans and he was amazing and he was like a little star on my news feed and i like to share happy th happy pet things i'm the mom of dad jokes i freaking love a good dad joke i post them all the time i post like like i said every morning is a happy cartoon a positive affirmation like my my social media is a happy place so at learned and go go on instagram and on Facebook, I did change it on Facebook too, um, to get that positivity. And like, if you're having a bad day, reach out to me. If you need somebody to talk to, reach out to me. You know, I have, I'm hearing impaired in one ear, the other one works. I'm happy to listen. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, that's big for people, especially they can hop over to Instagram. They can follow you on Facebook and they can get to know you and especially get all the positive vibes from you. And that's very important, especially in people's day to day. And uh, one of the biggest things I'm very happy I was I was right on. There's a feel you get after a decade of podcasting for people. And I'm glad to, you know, still on check. Still on check. I'm good. <laughs> well, um, it's been an absolute blast having you on. And I can't wait to see you in, in April at the Media Comic Con. Yes. While yes. You can walk up and call me Frank Percy if you want to. I'm calling you Billy Yams. <laughs> Billy Yams. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I have my pen. Absolutely. Name. <laughs> there you go. No, but I'm I'm really excited that you invited me to come on here because this has been a lot of fun. It was so wonderful having you. I mean, Absolutely. just please, if you have something that you're doing, let us know. We'll have you back. 
love to have Please, you back home. Yeah, anytime. Anytime you need like dad jokes or, you know, whatever. I'm the king of corny myself, so, you know. I, I think I'm good on the corny jokes, but, you know, we, there you go. We'll ha- when we yeah. have you back on, we'll have to have a dad joke off. Okay. There you go. Cause that that sounded a little. I know. We're gonna know. go what? I was like, you know what you said, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but it's funny sounding, so it's gonna it's work okay. out. It's fine. Oh. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. Like, dude, wow. it's gonna work out. All in a fraction well, of a second. Right off the edge so hard. <laughs> there you go. You just like. Uh, I gotta throw a joke out like there. At least one a podcast. I was watching the James Stokes one and Mike. And James's face when I, I I can't help myself. Sometimes I just have to make a joke, and everybody else is like, "Wow!" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> it's for me. When it's not for that, you. Like, it's it's for me." <laughs> yeah, it, it, that joke was just for me because I was going for that right there. I wanted there that go. reaction. Sometimes <laughs> dark humor. It's just for the person telling the joke. I'm it's sorry. So I'm funny. selfish sometimes. That's me time. It's you guys, you, you guys just experienced me time. Taking care of your mental health there. It's all good. Ah, uh, the dad joke competition uh-huh. will. Uh, you- yeah, uh, Frank called me a wordsmith. I get there eventually. Yeah, but the friend, there you go. the dad joke competition will be on the next tales that we have to talk with you. And hopefully Excellent. it is to announce your audio book that you read yourself. Yes. I want to work on that when I am not froggy anymore. Absolutely. So, I mean, you have the but recording yeah, I would equipment. Love for you it guys makes sense. It. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll pop over to, yeah. your, uh, to the trunk of your car during the media comic con. <laughs> there you go. I'll get like one of those newsies bags and I'll just like bring a bunch with me hey, too. Like Jabbar you know. Brown. He grabs, there you go. He grabs a backpack, tosses his comics in there. He does the same kind of guerrilla marketing. Sometimes yeah. it's is, what you need. You guys to do. know, like, I don't shut up, so my book is beefy, like, because I have a lot to say. So I think, like, right. that would probably add to my back problems with a big old backpack of them. But we'll see. Hey, can do I it s- for the art? I, I, I need a joke yeah. real quick before I end off this podcast. Can you give me that thing you just got? So hopefully, I'm imagining and. Uh, Big brother. Lift with your legs, not your back. Uh! <laughs> Big brother, producer uh, of the show. This is a comic okay. compendium he just got, Frank. My brother. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Compendium one. That's good. And I'm glad I, your, your book is bigger than mine. So I, I hope that hope I have a feeling feel that you will get. Touche. Touche. There you go. Very good. But I feel you will get your book. Or have at least several books. Like, this is actually a lot of fucking goddamn comics. This is, like, a person's lifetime yeah. of work. Like so I feel in your lifetime, you are going to get this thick of a book after looking at the size of that book. Just after four years, it's that thick? Dude. That's just the first yep. one. I couldn't even next, get close actually... to that. <laughs> No, we're close. Well, the That's thing is, I do have another book project in mind, so Ooh. I can come back on when that happens as well, which That's is going to be a children's series because we go from stripping to kids' books because why not? But it's oh, going good. to be That's a logical... with Stan and Amadeus Fluffernutter. So. Love it. What? Love how you tie that yeah, in. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. The rest of all the, uh, the, the things that you're doing, if uh, you, know, you want to come on because... Uh, you got something to promote or you got something, you know, you want to talk about? Let us know. That's why I we're here. definitely will. Thank you. Because this is awesome. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> well, it has been a pleasure letting our fans know they have to hunt you. And they can see you at the Great Media Comic Con. And I will be there. I love to end off this podcast the same goddamn way. Because we love you. We miss you. And we're going to see you next time. Until then, game on, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Awesome. Sammy. It's awesome. been a awesome. blast. Been a blast. Oh my god, I had so much fun. I didn't know when you started recording. I was like, oh shit, he's <laughs> are we on? Like there was no like we're gonna record now. No, right away. I got I got the I get the natural in that just goes there, and then I have my sign off. That's uh I like it that way because it's 
a little flair, you know. I saw, I see, like when I'm listening to podcasts, sometimes they have the natural in. Rogan likes to do that, a natural conversation. And I was like, mm, I like that. But you know what? Like Preston and Steve, Preston ends every pot, every show off with Ray John. Ray John, yep. And I end not, all of mine with not Ray John. Ray. It's not Ray and John. Although I thought that for fucking years. I was like, these guys must be really, really important. Like, Ray, John, boom. Them guys, you're going to find them. That's That's a weird name. I was looking for this guy named Ray John, but I I could not find him. He's not even on Facebook, so he's got to be old. Well, I end every episode of mine with always take things in life head on because if you stick your head in the sand, you might think you're hiding from the world, but the rest of the world just sees a big ass. <laughs> I no. love that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, my ending, you know, ostrich syndrome. And I love to end with end credits too. So, you know, this yep. will be a great podcast. Once I do get around to editing it, I have. So, I got so much fucking shit to do, but I expedite shit. I'm definitely going to be getting to yours as quickly as I can. As I'm, I'm trying to give myself a break to edit everything I have, but more right. guests keep goddamn contact to me, and I'm like, Frank, oh, we're gonna do it. And he's like, okay. So hey. it comes out of time, season, man. and it, it's good problems yeah. to have. But that's where a little bit of my anxiety comes from because I'm like, I need to put it out. It, yep. it will come out. I will link you to the episode so you can definitely promote it because I loved having you Thank on. Thank you. It was a blessed. Yeah, absolute this is pleasure. awesome. Yeah. And like I said, anytime, you know, like see if there, we want to talk about this. Do you know anything about it? If I do, I'll come on and talk about it. I don't care. I'm just yeah. enjoying this ride. So I'll reach right. out. Absolutely. Cool. And I can't wait to see you guys at the con. We'll yes. see you then. April. Yeah. I was there last year too. So. Okay. I was at the front. I was at the front desk checking in people dressed as a Jedi with a fedora. I was there with two of my kids and my nephew. So we we came and I just probably why you you look familiar. Yeah, being in service. I have that. I remember faces. Parker Posey. Well, I I remember faces because I'm horrible with names, and I'll go, "Hey, how are you?" That that was like half my career in the auto industry. Just like those, you know. Not very, uh, not very specific words that you can use to just let people know. Like hey, I remember you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. But it was a lot of fun. And like uh, retired Wonder Woman just made my whole freaking day. Like she was a trip. Dude. And then I wound up seeing her at Rocky Horror. Like she was two rows ahead of me, and I'm like smacking my brother. I'm like, I know that wig. I'm like, that's what? retired Wonder Woman. And then it came to great Scott, and I threw the toilet paper, and like I'm not athletic at all. I clocked her right in the back of the head. I was like, oh my god! But the wig was so big, I don't even think she noticed. Block it. She didn't block it. And stink nope. It. Boom! No. Right in the back of the head. No, she's retired. She's yeah. She's retired. Yeah, you know. It's still there. And- Reflexes are still over there. Yeah. Yeah, wow. but when we were leaving, I said hi to her. I'm like, I met you at Media Comic Con, and then she just turned on Wonder Woman. You know, like right away, I got into character. It's odd how because I saw her out of character and in character, and I'm like, my god, she is brilliant. brilliant. Well, that's what was funny when I met Ed Kowalczyk. I have had to cough for like an hour. Hold on. Excuse <laughs> me. Um, I gave him a book, and I went to the table where his friends were sitting. And the one woman was asking me about it. And then there was a guy there. And he's like, those books are a dime a dozen. I'm like, how can you say that if you haven't read it? He's like, I'm never going to read it. And I like turned Sydney on like that. I went, I know, honey, it's so many words and no pictures. <laughs> and like, he wound up buying the other copy I had on me. There you go. She made about Because I just like, turned, I was like back in the club dealing with them. You know, I was just like, boom. It was so funny. Crowd work. Yeah. It's important to have crowd work when you're doing sales because then yeah. that dismissiveness turns into, oh, shit, all right, I'll just buy it. You yep. get people with that. So you got a smart sales sense, and I definitely know we're going to have you back on, yep. and it's going to be awesome. a blast then too. Because yep. I talk about that in the book too, like how I tried to do the sexy thing and I cracked up because I knew I was full of shit, and i just like laugh in people's faces and they'd be very confused. So – I was just myself and I would do like ventriloquist boobs, you know, like, don't you want to give me a dollar? You know, and like they'd just crack up and like I'd make more money being a complete 
dumbass, you know, like than I would if I tried to be like all I'm like, yeah. Come on in the back with me. We're gonna have a good time. It might not be sexy, but you're never gonna forget this freaking lap dance. Like, you know, like, oh, you know, like having a good old time. So you you don't have to follow everybody else's rules to be successful. That's true. That's true. Perfect way to end off the end credits. There you go. All right, Sydney, until the next tales. All right. Thank you, you so guys much. Have a great night. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, no problem. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>